What's up everybody? Welcome back to another Real Estate for Beginners episode here on the channel. And I'm gonna sit down and talk quickly about one of the subjects you guys have been messaging me about a few times. And this is a pretty near and dear subject to me. I'm here in my, my office and uh, I think about this quite a lot. Uh, this is the office in our third property uh, this year. So I wanted to go over something um, specifically first before I dive into the concept of house hacking. The first and foremost, to thank you all so much for the DMs. The positive uh, DMs have been pretty amazing. Uh, a lot of really great feedback on not only the uh, the Flippa investing course that I released, but a couple of people DM me today asking for updates on the uh, most recent uh, video that I did about mobile game investing that I thought was pretty pretty wild, a little bit out there, buying mobile games, investing in ads to generate uh, revenue from mobile games. So I'm going to do an update on that in a couple of weeks uh, about some of the failures that I ran into with that. Uh, but thank you so much for all the support. So slap a like if you guys have seen any of these videos in the past, if you're interested in real estate investing and just general success. And uh, without further further complications, let's dive into house hacking. So what is house hacking? That is where you are living in a home while you are renting out part of it to subsidize the payment that you are making. That could be a mortgage um, on that property. So the idea here is that you are not necessarily covering the entire amount that you owe on the property. That's kind of a misconception that I've seen a lot of where people say like, okay, well, if I'm buying a duplex and living in half of it, then uh, you know I need to find somebody to put in the other uh, the other unit that's going to cover you know two thousand dollars a month, and <laughs> you know if I'm living in this place in the Midwest or something like that, nobody's going to pay two thousand dollars a month, and it makes things way more complex. So first and foremost, do not think about covering the entire principal or the entire monthly payment for the mortgage. That was one of the big blockers for me. So uh, an important step here with real estate is listen to people that have done these things on YouTube. So when you're listening to you know, videos, when you listen to gurus talk about these various different concepts, make sure that they are talking about things or showing you the things that they have done in the past um, that have to do with their expertise, that they've actually executed and done these things that they're talking about. So in my case, this is our third property, uh, two, two rentals, four units, and uh, you know we just moved into this uh, new property here in Tampa, Florida. And one of the most interesting things uh, that we've learned after house hacking twice, where we moved into a multifamily, rented out half of it, renovated the entire property, and then uh, rented that, moved into another multifamily, house hacked that where somebody was living in the other unit while we were renovating, and then we just finally moved into a single family uh, where we are just living here alone on our, our plot of land here, but we house hacked twice with uh, two multifamily properties that are now rented out to a total of five tenants. So the idea was, all right, you know, spend some time, um, you know, we did, get pregnant, which was very exciting in this, in the second multifamily property. But at the same time, you know, that was, that was, uh, very much like, okay, we need to actually find a place where we're alone and we have enough space for ourselves and we're not like sharing a property with other people, uh, for having a child. So, um, that was something that priorities shift pretty quickly depending on what your situation is. But the idea, the underlying concept here is that you are living in half of a property or a percentage of a property and you are renting out the other half to a tenant or another percentage of the property to offset some of that cost each month. And if you are young, if you're in your 20s, that is the optimal time to do this because you are lean, you are moving around, uh, you have lower amount of responsibilities and uh, you know you can definitely, definitely do this. People will give you loans to do this. Um, it's just finding the deals is the, the difficult part here. So one of the tips that I wanted to give you guys, for example, in Tampa, Florida, where uh, my wife and I moved, there are units that have a in-law in the back. Now an in-law is, is, the technical term is an ADU. 
and this is where it's not technically zoned as a multifamily, but it is a two, two property, two units on a property. Like there are two actual buildings on a property that people can live in. And this was what both of ours were. And this was historic, um, a historic district where it was really popular to have these ADUs in the backyard where actual in-law, mother-in-laws would come and they would stay. And uh, that was like a big trend in the 20s, 30s, 40s. And we really did some research around neighborhoods here in Tampa, uh, Seminole Heights, Tampa Heights, um, a lot of these different hip neighborhoods that are on the, the up and coming uh, area with coffee shops, trinket shops, all that, all that cool stuff with the, the hipsters running around and the fixie bikes. And uh, we did a lot of research and moved into the first one where we were renovating it out. We played around with Airbnb for a while that we actually did a lot of blogging about, a ton of blogging. Um, and that's actually on my wife, uh, wife and I's channel, um, Scooch and Steve. So that was the premise in which we could get into the game where we said, all right, we're gonna buy these kind of ADU uh, mother-in-law style properties where there are four beds, three baths across the whole property. And it was a three, two in the front and it was a one, one in the back with you know, anywhere between three and 500 square feet in the back ADU and, you know, anywhere between like 15 and 16, 1700 maybe in the front three, two uh, unit. So you have the ability to put two tenants on that one property. And it's not necessarily like a, a stereotypical duplex that you would look at where it's like, oh, okay, they're literally sharing a wall. There's two units on either side. There's a tenant in each one, two doors right next to each other. Um, two boxes essentially, but they were different. So you play with different rental rates there where you're saying, all right, what's the going rate per square footage around here? Is it $1,000 a month for that back unit there in the backyard? Uh, are they gonna be comfortable with sharing you know, a backyard, with sharing the actual lot itself? And the majority of the time, people are going to be open to it. Um, usually not with Airbnb, we found having like a, someone living in the main house, the three, two, and then Airbnb in the back, that didn't really go over that well when we started talking to people, uh, potential tenants in there. So I think that the first and first and foremost to go back over what I talked about, don't think that you have to cover the entire, the entire cost. When we first started with living in that first three, two with the in-law, we were covering about $1,000 out of a $1,900 a month mortgage. So that meant that we were living there for $900. Now, the, the concept here is that you have multiple properties and the cash flow is then covering that 900. So, uh, you know, if you're setting up multiple streams of income and whatnot, you can cover that 900 easily uh, with another stream. Now, in the case where you're moving, and you're renting um, or you're, you're buying another property, moving into that and then renting that one out uh, that you were just in, there is this really interesting period of time that I wanted to talk about. If you guys have watched through to the video, or through the video to this point, I wanted to bring this up. This is something not many people really talk about on YouTube. I have seen no one talk about this, but when you are living in a property that you renovated and you're getting ready to buy another property and rent that one out, there's a period of time where it's kind of like a chicken or the egg with a lender, where the lender wants to make sure that your debt to income ratio is uh, healthy enough to take on more debt. Very similar to a business, if you have enough cash flow coming in, you have the ability to take on X amount of debt, according to a lender, per lender. So in this example here, where you're moving from, let's say a 3-2 into another 3-2 with an in-law in the back, um, as a second property, you need to be showing that property actively and get a tenant in there to sign a lease to cover that debt because the lender isn't going to give you or allow you to move into that new property unless you've covered that debt payment uh, every month, that mortgage payment. So in our case, we had to cover that 900 um, payment there and that makes it a little bit of a of a stressful time where you're trying to find tenants and in our case you know between we had the airbnb going for a thousand dollars a month we could have rented the the main house for 
anywhere between like $21 to $2,400 a month. Could have really, really generated a lot of cash flow from it, but ultimately, when you're in that situation where you're trying to move into another property, you uh, really just need to find someone to put in there um, immediately. <laughs> like you just have to have to fill it for the debt to income ratio to work out. And if you guys haven't done research on debt to income ratio, it's pretty straightforward. It's just your debts and your income and you have to be able to pay your debts and they're making sure that you're just not going overboard with leverage and not over levering yourself and just going completely bust. So that is the idea of house hacking in general that I wanted to go over. I know a lot of questions have come in about, uh, you know, the ability to get financing for these types of things where if you're just a single person trying to buy a duplex, are people going to finance you? And the answer is yes. Um, if you have, five to 10% to put down. The, the, the key here is that you're living in it, so you're putting less percent down, less amount down um, to get into the property, live there for a year, two years, whatnot, fix it up, renting it out, and then uh, continue on. And this is something that is the, it gets you to that part that I was talking about where you have to cover your debt before you can move on. And this is a, a very big, uh, big jump that a lot of people aren't willing to do. A lot of people um, aren't willing to take on that risk, that little time frame where you're looking to close on a property and you need to offset that debt by a, an actual signed lease. But the reality is, is it's not, uh, it's not that hard if you're in like a, a city limit. If you're in a, a relatively metropolitan area, you will be able to find some renters if the property is maintained and it's it's well kept and you have done the proper renovations, you've done the proper fixes in order to allow somebody to live in there comfortably. Um, that is just how you should how you should always approach all, all real estate deals, is always making sure that people are going to want to live there and there's high rentability. So that's kind of the overview here, guys. Um, thank you so much for all of the questions that you guys have proposed to me, not only on Instagram and Twitter, but on Reddit now. I'm getting a lot of, uh, a lot of questions on there and comments on there. But I think that there are a few parts in house hacking that were very important to get across. And I'm glad that I could address that. And I hope to see you guys on the next episode where we're going to be talking about more real estate investing concepts here on the channel uh, because of all of the amazing requests and all the amazing support for this. But I will see you guys on the next episode here on the real estate investing series.